Hello, Blake Brunin here from Trinity Whip Company, and I'm putting together a series of videos that I call the Whip Maker's Eye, and they're going to be a bunch of things trying to point out the craftsmanship of bull whips and how to look at a whip to understand more what you're looking at if you're not a whip maker and how to kind of see what's in front of you. And uh, as an old phrase I've heard before is you don't need to be a great actor to spot a bad one. Here I pulled out this black whip right here. This is actually the first bull whip I ever made and it's a four foot 12 flat. When I first got to make whips, I uh, shadowed under a local whip maker named Steve Townsend who was also very new at the time. And all I was able to do is learn how to cut, stretch, prep by hand, attach a core, and braid the first belly. With that, I went home and spent another eight hours completing this. And I really didn't know exactly what I was doing to a certain extent on a lot of things. And this is a really good example of a lot of things that you don't want to see. Now I'm going to put together a lot of videos and this is just going to be more of one how to look at some things that are obvious things that you don't want to see with a whip. Now, as I said, this is a good example of a whip maker, which was me, that just didn't really know what he was doing yet. Now, Steve actually put the knots on and he did a really good job with them. And as you can see, you can see the nail spike well. This isn't coming up over the nail spike. He did a really good job. I actually had him do the knots because I was still in the thralls of just trying to understand what I was doing and wanted to get this finished. The handle braiding, okay, first of all. The braiding actually looks really good. I'm gonna go through this whole thing very slowly and there are issues with the braiding. I'll go into detail, all right? And, but other than this slight gap right there, there are no gaps, surprising. There is some bunch up or overlap like this and other issues, you know, it's not braided very evenly. There are mismatched strands, like here's a poor drop. Here's an example of a poor drop. They both dropped at the same time and got pulled in too much and I'm sure there's some strand issue. I didn't really understand how to match. The fall hitch is a little ugly as well and it's pretty fat. Once again, this isn't laid right and there are other issues here. You know, not that you can see through here, it's just a different type of fall hitch than I do, but it just wasn't really made right. I also didn't know how to take care of the fall hitch, like how wide the fall hitch should be compared to the end point and other things. Now, there are some things that are, I gotta say, I've heard compliments saying it's uh, pretty good for a first time, and I only had slight help on making it, but there's so much that is just wrong with this whip. One of my favorite ones to point out is if you can see right here, see if you can see that from here to about here or more, there's what's called a flat spot. Maybe you can see it in that light. It just goes flat. Now this can happen because the bolster didn't meet up all the way. I didn't understand how to look at you know, cowhide to understand what was stretching, what was not. I knew to overlap the core with the bolster, but depending on understanding your cowhide even, uh, it's stretchier in some areas than others on just different hides are stretchier, so you can't use a rule of thumb for each one. And while it might've matched up, it just flew apart. As I braided, it just stretched out apart and I didn't realize that was happening because as like I said, it was my first whip. Um, as far as matching, now everything should taper, uh, but over here, you know, they, they should at least be the same width as you go down. Now, I didn't know, like I said, it was my first whip to know how to taper these or where I'm supposed to drop. So this is a good example of someone that doesn't know that. There's some crowding, some overlap slightly or bunching. Here's a good example of a bad strand. Th these two strands are way thinner than the next one. You want to match strands. So no matter how they make it, because there are different ways you can drop or not drop or taper this but they should all match up relatively well i mean there should be maybe a 0.5 millimeter here and there if you're definitely doing them by hand and eye but you know like here's another example now i ended up dropping differently i dropped the morgan where i dropped two at a time because once again that's all i i knew and like i said that's the only gap right here you know there really shouldn't be any gaps on the whip a good place where it can happen you can see through here this is a typical place where you, you wouldn't see the gap normally because if I would have went from a diamond to a chevron right there or what you call herringbone, that's normally where you'd put this knot over. You know, you, when you transition from diamond plat to herringbone, that is where there, there may be a little gap there. That you can work around it when you get better, but that's the most common gap any rookie should have. And that's usually why it's called the transition is because it's not just where it is on the nail, it's where you transition from a diamond on a classic indie style the herringbone and that would probably cover up any imperfection there 
Um, let's see what else is going on with this. Like I said, the, the, the seam, and this could just be because how I braided it, you know, the, the seam doesn't line up with the natural curve of the whip. Now, <clears throat> this is probably, yeah, I'd say this right here should be lined up with the spine, but it's not. And this can happen for a lot of reasons. I would say this one is definitely due to amateur braiding. And if you see the seam as it should be, it actually straightens up farther down the whip, which is kind of odd. It just kind of turned right here. You know, this has had several, several hours of cracking, but it's kind of just been put up. But generally the, steam, the seam should stay straight down the whole curve. But there are also factors when you're getting used whips that could make the seam be off. Um, as far as being a new whip, there, there's a lot of amateur whip making understanding on how to braid correctly or things like that that causes the seam to not stay on. But once it's been used, a lot of times just the way people store a whip can cause the seam not to be straight. Now this doesn't really would say that on a, at least a better whip than this one. And this one won't affect too much. Um, not having the seam line up with the curve of the whip won't make it crack any worse. Um, a lot of whips over time will find a new curve and it can be due to how someone's cracking it, like they're not holding it the same way. Uh, some people turn it different degrees and crack it every way, that can affect it. I think a major thing that can cause this seam to come off on a used whip to where it's no longer center is just the way they store it. When they wrap it all up, uh, they don't really take the time to wrap it up where the seam is good and then store it. They just kind of wrap it up like you would a rope. Like if you did rope roping and then you just randomly pulled it together instead of kept it with its natural curve, it, it will sit there and slowly start to lose the curve as well. You know, there's different issues on the inside. I can explain it wrong, but, uh, well, not wrong, but just not the best. But as I can see, this is a really good example of some bad, bad work. Amazingly though, like I said on this fall hitch, going back here, this does kind of line up pretty decent. And this is to, I, I do my hitches differently now altogether, but with this method, they all lined up pretty well, which it should be. It shouldn't be all jagged all over the place. Now I'm gonna get in more detail on different things such as braiding technique, drops, gapping, and all these videos. But right now I just thought showing off my very first bull whip would be a really good example to just see how what, what you shouldn't see. Now there shouldn't be gaps in a thong, there really shouldn't. Um, if I ever found a gap in a thong, I do one of two things. One, I immediately put that to the side if I've got done rolling it and I found out I made a mistake, and then I remake one for the guy, for the whoever ordered it. And then what I will do with this one, depending on where it's at or how bad, I may take the whole overlay off, but generally I don't. I would just, uh, one gap here is not that big. I would call it an unintended braid, as they would call it. It's just an unintended gap, and it shouldn't be so visible to be a strand width. I mean, we're talking about the the gap, where's it at, where you see in here, wherever it was, I found that other one. It'd be so mi minor, you, you, you wouldn't even notice it. But with that, I, may, I would list the gap. And generally when I even show pictures of whips, I just lay it down, I like this way. It doesn't matter, I could lay it the other way. But I usually give good detailed pics so you guys can see it. And I will, I'm always as honest as possible about any things that I think are what you might call a deal breaker, you know. But once again, this is my first whip. and. There should always be a grace period with all whip makers. There's a, there should always be a grace period. And that's understood. I mean, you're a craftsman and you're new. So for you whip makers out there, it's okay you have issues. It's, it's fine you have issues. You should expect to have issues. I went in making this knowing my first 10 would be learning lessons and have a lot of dud problems. So I made sure that instead of trying to refix everything, I did the best I could and moved on. And the next I could move on. And I found a lot of these issues so I could work past them and make a more superior whip earlier than just constantly, <laughs> if you took a painting and you paint a picture and it's really not turning out the way you want. It, it, to me, it, it wasn't worth the time and to try to scrape everything off the painting and bleach the canvas, if that's even possible, and then repaint, I would just get a new canvas. And the first 10 or so should be considered maybe gifts or you would share at, you'd sell at cost if you're lucky to get or even a better deal and let people know that, hey, I'm new, this is what I made. So once again, this series that I'm going to work on will be called the Whip Maker's Eye or How to Gain the Whip Maker's Eye. And it'll just be based on how to look at a whip. And just to follow up on this note, when I first started cracking whips, there were three or four years where all I did was crack whips. And I probably had over 100 whips pass through my hand. And then I realized uh, at the time, especially when I started getting whip making later, is that I never once looked at a whip. And I know that sounds crazy. I mean, you will look at your whip, but the average person 
doesn't look for things like the the seam all the time or the the, the match the strand or understanding where the taper should begin or end and where the drop should happen and how to tell a clean fall hitch i mean you could look at this and say this isn't i mean it's it feels like a decent whip but you know it doesn't look like one but there's a you just don't know how to look like i couldn't tell what if it was a 12 flat or it ended on a six flat or it ended on an eight flat you know just because i wasn't shown and i was surprised after i started making whips and I've been starting to realize this is something that kind of needs to be out here as a small series, is that no one really goes out of their way to explain a lot of these things for a normal person to learn. Is it necessary to know this, to spot a great whip? Probably not. The, the, the craftsmanship will speak for itself. But as I say, I think a lot of you first-time whip crackers or even first-time whip makers, uh, whip makers will tend to start seeing their work with new eyes. And if you are just a whip cracker, you may not be able to really see what makes a good whip, like recognizing taper and how it overall tapers, as well as tapering of the strands and how to spot drops and, and what plot count it is and when it should taper and when it shouldn't. So once again, I'm Blake Bruni from Trinity Whip Company, and this is showing off my first whip I ever made, which is a four foot 12 plat. And I think there's a lot of good things to kind of show you what shouldn't be there. And there's a lot of good things that actually did work on this being a first one. And uh, as I said, when I first made a whip, I only had uh, some very basic training. I learned how to cut by hand, stretch, prep by hand, attach a core, attach a belly, and braid. And that's all I learned. I, did, I, I didn't I get to learn anything else. And I went home and immediately spent another eight hours before I finished this. I was up all night. I probably spent 16 hours on this whip before I could sleep. I was determined that I would not rest. And once again, I did not do the knots. Um, I wanted to see how that was done so later on a week later so i visited steve again and he kind of put a basic foundation on these and showed me kind of how to do it and then on my next whip of course i i having some of this understood better that's where i moved on to my next issue i didn't know how to do knots and like i said there should always be a grace period so you whip makers out there don't be too harsh on your work know it is a process there is no destination to whip making you're constantly learning or you're, you're just you're just not making and it can be very easy for people to not learn or not grow. As I like to tell my students when I teach martial arts, practice doesn't make perfect, only perfect practice makes perfect. But it takes a lot of time, research, dedication, experimentation, studying what happened or didn't happen. And another good one is finding really good quality whips from other whip makers that are reputable and kind of using that to compare to and see what you're doing differently maybe. So God bless, you have a wonderful, wonderful day and i tell you what just keep posted i'll be posting some more videos soon and uh, when i post these videos hopefully it'll help you understand how to look at the whips you have and just develop an appreciation as well as being able to understand you know a craftsmanship from maybe a picture you see here and there as well as getting one in your hands again i'm blake Brinney of trinity whip company god bless